Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be graphing derivatives. Let's start off with the function f of x equals x squared, which I've drawn in the blue. And I've also marked a point of tangency at x equals 1. So for both the tangent line and the graph of x squared, they have a point in common at 1, 1. Now we want to find the slope of the tangent line, and we can do that by using rise over run. So if we count up 2 and go over 1, you can see that we hit another point on our tangent line. So that means the slope of this tangent line is 2. When we're calculating the derivative at prime at x, it gives us 2x. Remember the derivative is just a formula for the slope of the tangent line. So where I have my x value at 1, if I multiply 2 times 1, I'm going to get 2, which gives me the slope of the tangent line when x equals 1. Now if I were to graph the derivative function, it would be graphing out an x value and the slope of the tangent line for its y value. So in this case, I have the ordered pair 1, 2, when the slope of the tangent line is 2. Okay, so let's see what happens when we move this um, point of tangency. So let's move it over here. Let's say that we move it all the way to 2. You can see what happens here is um, that we're tracing out the path of the derivative function here in red. And you can see that it's increasing. Well, it's increasing because the slope of the tangent line is also increasing. If I put 2 into my derivative function, my slope now would be 4. And you can probably see that it's much steeper than it was before. Okay, so let's go back the other way and see what happens. Now, it's coming back down, and you can see that the derivative function is heading towards 0. Well, it's heading towards 0 because the slope of the tangent line, that black line that we have drawn there, is approaching 0. It's approaching a flat line or a horizontal line here. And when the slope of the tangent line is 0, you're going to have a horizontal line. So our f prime at x function is now at 0. Now, notice that so far, we've plotted all the points above 0 on our, tan on our derivative function. On the other side of the graph, the slope is going to be negative. So now our derivative function is going to be below the x-axis, showing that it's a negative value. So for all these points over here, you have actually the graph is decreasing on the left side of the vertex. So you're going to have your derivative function below the x-axis. And <coughs> then we have our derivative function at 0. And then where the function is increasing, your derivative is going to be above the x-axis. OK, here's our next function. We have f of x equals x to the 1 third. And we've calculated the derivative function as 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. Um, so what we want to do is trace out, again, that derivative function so we can see our relationship. But first of all, we have this ordered pair at 1, 1 um, on our f of x function. It's also the ordered pair on the tangent. That's where the tangent line is touching our, our function. And again, we want to look at the slope of the tangent line. Now, our slope of the tangent line is positive. Let's see what happens if we change our x value. Okay, so as we increase our x value, the slope of our tangent line is kind of shallowing out. It's not going to actually reach 0 this time, but it will come down pretty close to 0 as we go um, increasing values for x. So we can see that our function, x to the 1 third, is kind of flattening out there, but not going directly to 0. Now, let's see what happens as we come in towards 0 for our x value. So now, the slope of the tangent line is increasing, so the graph of the derivative is heading up to infinity. Now notice that it looks like it's approaching an asymptote, and it is, because what happens is as we close in on 0, the slope of the tangent line is going to infinity, or it's going to be undefined there. And if you look at your um, derivative function, we have x to the negative 2 thirds. Well, that would be the same as 1 over x to the 2 thirds, so 
we would have a zero in the denominator and it would be undefined. So that would be a vertical tangent line right at zero. Now where we have x values that are negative, we still have a positive slope to our tangent line. So the graph of the derivative is still above the x-axis. And it's actually repeating what we had on the other side for the positive x values. It's kind of a reflection of the derivative function. And that's because this um, graph, x to the one-third, has origin symmetry, or 180 degree rotation symmetry. So the slopes are going to be um, the same on each side there, and a positive for all of them. All right, the next function that we wanted to look at is um, f of x equals the square root of x. So we had that one drawn in the blue there. And you know with the square root of x function that it has an endpoint at 0, 0. And we went ahead and took the derivative of the function, so we have um, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So you can't put any values um, less than 0 into the original function. You can't put 0 into the derivative function because that's going to be undefined. So what we expect is that as our x value approaches 0, that we're going to have an undefined slope. So let's go ahead and look and see what happens there. So here's our derivative function tracing out. And notice the slope is getting higher as we come in towards 0, and higher and higher and higher. Now what's happening is that the tangent line is approaching a vertical line. And when you have the vertical line, you're going to have an undefined slope. So it kind of disappeared there for a minute. But you can see that our derivative function is heading up toward infinity. Now, again, as we go out with greater values for x, our tangent line slope is flattening out, heading toward 0. So our derivative function is heading toward 0. Okay, our next function is f of x equals x to the two-thirds. And we took the derivative of two th x to the two-thirds, and it's two-thirds x to the negative one-third. So again, what we should expect is as we come into zero that we're going to have a vertical tangent line because it's going to be the derivative undefined at zero. Now, with this graph, you do have both positive and negative values for x that we can put into the function because when you do x to the two-thirds, you would take your cube root first and square it. And there, you, there's no problem with taking the cube root of a negative or a positive. If you squared first and then took the cube root, then everything would be um, positive, and then you take the cube root and you get the same answer. So there's no problems with x being positive or negative with this particular function. The domain is all reals. All right, so we're starting off with um, x equal to 1. So on our graph, we have the ordered pair 1, 1. On our derivative function, we've got um, 1 and 2 thirds. So let's go ahead and trace out our derivative. So again, as we head toward um, infinity out here, you can see that the slope of the tangent line is flattening out, and so is the slope of the derivative function going down. Now, <clears throat> as we come in towards 0, we're going to go up to infinity with our tangent line coming in close to a straight line here. And then we're going to go on to the other side. And notice that on the other side, the slope of the tangent line is now negative. I kind of flipped around. So we have our f prime of x, our derivative function, is below the x-axis now, but still heading upward um, close to 0 as it flattens out. So you can see um, the symmetry in both the original function and the derivative function, our relationship between the derivative and the tangent line. Okay, um, the next graph that I wanted to show you was x to the third minus x squared. Taking the derivative of that, we get 3x squared minus 2x. Now, looking at the graph of the function, you can see that it has some um, high points here and a low point here, and it goes off to infinity everywhere else. So let's see what happens as we trace out our derivative function. Uh, 
Okay, so here we have our derivative function, and you notice that the slope of the tangent line is kind of flattening out as we move in toward 1 here. And as we come into this low point here, the derivative function becomes 0. When we have that flat line, we're going to have a 0 for our derivative function. Now, we have a turning point on our graph, which means that we're changing from decreasing to increasing as you move from left to right. So we have um, in here somewhere a point where the tangent line is going to have a, a changing point also because we're going to come back up to zero. So we're going to talk about those inflection points at another time, but you can see that where the derivative function has a low point, we have a change here in our slope. <coughs> so um, it's going from increasing to decreasing, or decreasing to increasing. Okay, so now we're at zero again, and we're going to come around and go off to infinity. Now notice that the slope of the tangent line here is positive, so the graph of the tangent line is above the x-axis. Here where the slope of the tangent line is 0, we have our derivative function at 0. Here our slope of our tangent line is negative, so we're below the x-axis. And we're going to stay below the x-axis until we get back to a slope of the tangent line that is 0 again, which is that flat line. And then from there on we're going to increase. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.